Welcome back to my channel Miss Medicine. In this video we will discuss about Staphylococcus bacteria. If you are new here subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Staphylococcus aureus are gram positive cocci. They are arranged in tetrads and clusters. Staphylococcus means bunch of grapes. Coccus means berry. It means bacteria occurring in grape like clusters or berry. So, the next is the classification of Staphylococcus aureus. On the basis of pathogenicity, they are pathogenic and non pathogenic. In pathogenic, it includes Staphylococcus aureus. Non pathogenic, it includes Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus saprophaticus, Staphylococcus albus, Staphylococcus citrus, Staphylococcus heminus, etc. And based on pigment production, Staphylococcus aureus have golden yellow pigment colonies, Staphylococcus albus have white colonies and Staphylococcus citrus have lemon yellow colonies and another classification which is based on coagulase production coagulase positive which is Staphylococcus aureus and coagulase negative are Staphylococcus epidermidis and Staphylococcus saprophaticus so Staphylococcus aureus natural habitat are nostrils and skin its morphology they are gram positive cocci its diameter is 0.5 to 1.5 micrometer. It occurs in groups, also single or in pairs. They form irregular grape-like clusters. They are non-motile, non-sporing and few strains are capsulated. Next is culture. These are aerobes and facultative anaerobes. Staphylococcus aureus optimal temperature for growth is 37 degrees Celsius and pH for growth is 7.5. They grow on nutrient agar. It shows golden yellow and opaque colonies with smooth glistening surface 1 to 2 mm in diameter. On blood agar, golden yellow colonies surrounded by a clear zone of hemolysis which is beta hemolysis. When incubated in sheep or rabbit, blood agar in atmosphere of 20% of carbon dioxide and on mac conque agar it shows smaller colonies than those on nutrient agar and are pink color due to lactose fermentation and it also shows on mannitol salt agar staph aureus ferments mannitol and appear as yellow colonies msa is a useful selective medium for recovering s aureus from fecal specimens when investigating food poisoning biochemical properties of staph aureus these are catalyst positive oxidase negative ferment glucose lactose maltose sucrose and mannitol with production of acid but no gas and mannitol fermentation carries diagnosis significance Staph aureus are indole test negative, MR test positive, VP test positive, ureus test positive, hydrolyzed gelatin, it reduces nitrate to nitrite, phosphatase positive, DNA test positive and coagulase test positive. In slide test, it shows clumping factor and in tube test free coagulase in catalase. That's why it shows catalase positive test. Next are the virulence factors. These are cell wall associated structures, extracellular toxins and coagulase. Cell wall associated structures. These are divided into capsule, peptidoglycan, protein A, pumping factor, bound coagulase. Capsule adhere to host cell and it resists phagocytosis. Peptidoglycan inhibits inflammatory response. Protein A binds to FC moiety of immunoglobulin G, exerting antiopsomin and therefore its strongly antiphagocytic effect and clumping factor cause organism to clump in presence of plasma. Next, virulence factors extracellular toxins. It includes hemolysin, leukosidin, antirotoxin, toxic shock syndrome, toxin and exfoliating toxin. In hemolysin, they are divided into alpha, beta, gamma and delta. Hemolytic, dermonecrotic and leukocidal effect. 
leukosidin which is pantone valentine factor it kills wbcs by producing holes in the cell membrane anterior toxin acts on ans to cause illness and toxin shock syndrome toxin it produce fever skin rashes diarrhea conjunctivitis and death to shock and the next exfoliating toxin it breaks intracellular bridges in the stratum granulosum of epidermis and causes its separation from underlying tissue resulting in a blistering and exfoliating disease of skin next are the extracellular enzymes it includes fucagulase staphylokinase hyaluronidase dna lipase phospholipase and protease free coagulase clots plasma by acting along with crf present in plasma binding to prothrombin and converting fibrinogen to fibrin staphylokinase it degrades fibrin clots hyaluronidase it hydrolyzes the acidic mucopolysaccharides present in matrix of connective tissues and dna lipase phospholipase and protease it degrades dna lipid phospholipid and protein respectively next is the pathogenesis it adhere to damage skin mucosa or tissue surfaces at this sites they evade defense mechanisms of the host colonize and cause tissue damage staphylococcus aureus produces disease by multiplying in tissues liberating toxins stimulating inflammation aureus cause some clinical syndromes we will discuss all of these one by one so first is cutaneous infections it cause folliculitis which is the inflammation of hair follicles a small red bump or pimple develops at infection sites of hair follicle you can see the image and the sty a sty is folliculitis affecting one or more hair follicles on the edge of the upper or lower eyelid next are the furuncles or boils furuncles is deep seated infection originating from folliculitis if infection extends from follicle to neighbor tissue it causes redness swelling severe pain commonly found on the neck armpit and groin regions it also causes carbuncles carbuncles is an aggregation of infected furuncles carbuncles may form large abscess it is large area of redness swelling and pain punctuated by several sites of drainage pus staphylococcus also causes impetigo it is superficial skin infection which common in children usually produces blisters or sores on the face neck hands and diaper area it is characterized by watery blisters which becomes pustules and then honey colored crust impetigo with vesicles pustules and sharply demarcated regions of honey colored crusts you can see the image next are the deep infections it includes osteomyelitis which is inflammation of bone bacteria can get to the bone by blood stream or following an injury clinical features of osteomyelitis are pain swelling deformity defective healing and in some cases pus also we can diagnose it by x ray mri and bone aspirates next infection is periostitis which is inflammation of periosteum of bone clinical features are fever localized pain and leukocytosis we can diagnose it by needle aspiration of subperiosteal fluid next infection is endocarditis which is an inflammation of the inner layer of the heart the endocardium endocarditis occurs when bacteria enter blood stream travel to the heart and lodge on abnormal heart walls or damaged tissue you can see the image staphylococcus also causes exfoliative disease exfoliate means scaling off tissues in layers which is also known as sssss staphylococcal skin scalded syndrome previous it is also called dermatitis exfoliativa pemphigus neonatrum and reuters disease epidermal toxin produced by staphylococcus aureus at skin and it is carried by blood stream to epidermis 
where it causes a split in a cellular layer this toxin separates outer layer of dermis from underlying tissue next is toxic shock syndrome it caused when toxic shock syndrome toxin liberated by staphylococcus aureus which enter into blood stream and it causes symptoms like high fever headache vomiting diarrhea conjunctival reddening decrease in blood pressure skin rashes and kidney failure staphylococcus aureus also causes food poisoning when consuming food in which s aureus staph aureus has multiplied and formed endotoxin it causes symptoms like nausea vomiting severe abdominal cramp diarrhea sweating headache and its incubation period is less than 6 hours next is mode of transmission it can be transmitted by airborne droplets cross infection person with lesions and asymptomatic carrier how you can prevent it by washing your hands keep wounds covered avoid sharing personal care items cooking and storing food properly and reduce tampon risk menstrual tampons can cause toxic shock syndrome how you can treat staph aureus infection by antibiotic therapy wound drainage removal of dead tissue and device removal next are the lab diagnosis we can diagnose by hematological investigation by checking total leukocyte count differential leukocyte count bacterial investigations by the help of specimens like pus nasal swab food blood or sputum culture and isolation a tube coagulase test next is mrsa which is methicillin resistant staph aureus most strains of staph aureus even those acquired in community are penicillin resistant resistance is attributable to beta lactamase production due to genes located on extra chromosomal plasmids they are resistant due to presence of unusual penicillin binding protein pbp in the salvol of resistant strains and it leads to pbp to pbp to a next are the cones these are coagulase negative staphylococcus bacteria it includes staphylococcus epidermidis it causes infection of native heart walls and intravascular prothesis native means natural natural heart walls and staphylococcus saprophaticus it causes urinary tract infections mainly in sexually active women cones that are less common implicated as pathogens these includes staph hominis staph hemolyticus staph coni staph lugdunensis staph sacroliticus staph scleifery staph simulans and staph warneri i hope you like the video thank you